so first class of your analog electronics kap so welcome to analog electronics kap today uh, we'll be teaching uh, dealing with basic uh, ohm's law so all of you will know so on second will be uh, mesh analysis and node analysis third will be your theorem series so of thevenin theorem and uh, norton theorem so why analog electronics like anyone can answer every everything you do in computer is digital like why do you need analog electronics yeah so all the signals in real world are uh, basically analog in nature so you need some way to transform those analog signals into digital for further processing so you need analog electronics so these forms this is like the very basis of uh, analog electronics uh, let's start off with ohm's law can anyone tell me what ohm's law is just i in 12 very basic let's tell the equation at this. yeah v is equal to ir so it basically says yeah, what's the condition Uh, okay, let's uh, forget the mechanical and the part and stuff. So just at constant uh, temperature and pressure. So what is this trying to say is, if you have a conducting element, let's say a resistor, the current flowing across the uh, current flowing in the resistor is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. So V is equal to I R. So if I plot, get it plugged in. If you have a curve like this kind of thing, how will you find the resistance? Yeah. This is 1 by curve, so I was thinking for so have this and R is So 1 by slope. Slope is I by V and you get 1 by slope. But in actual circuits, like when you do analysis in lab, like when you do it practical scenarios, you get something like this. So let's say uh, Why do you get something? Any idea? Okay. Oh, this is V or I. When you do it in practical electronics, you don't get a straight line. You get like of errors in higher voltage and higher currents or something like that. Structure of resistance. Uh, okay, other than that, yeah, that's also one of the reasons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that happens with temperature. This is only at constant temperature and pressure. Once you start for conducting current, the particles can happen. You can't maintain the constant temperature. So you get variations in the circuit. This is the ideal case for Ohm proposed. This is what the basic Ohm law is. So <coughs> let's see some basic circuits which uh, follows Ohm's law. We'll be knowing all this stuff. So I just go back to play with this. Uh, well, V1 is okay. Yeah, before we follow this, I want to tell you the sign convention we use in all the mesh analysis and node analysis. It's basically like this you have a resistance element, and let's say current is flowing like this from entering from one side and other side. The potential difference here is plus, and here is minus. So, it, this is the potential. This is how you know this state of this thing. So, this is the basic. Convention we follow in all the mesh analysis and node analysis. So remember this because we get lot lot of confusions in mesh analysis and node analysis. Like we get a lot of errors if you don't follow this. So yeah. Or you can do it other way around. Like as a like wish let's, let's follow single convention throughout all the analysis. That's how it is. So you can tell me the voltages. Yeah. So current is current. Okay, what is what configuration is this? 
series. So the same current flows through all the resistance I, let's keep it I and then I is equal to uh, V by R2 3 which is sigma R1 plus R2 plus R3. So any V I is equal to I into R I. Correct no? Any doubts? So let's move on to this thing. Next. <coughs> let me keep this in parallel. What's the voltage? V1, V2. Okay, yeah. so in parallel configuration, the voltage remains the same. In series configuration, current remains the same. That's the basic uh, the idea I have, to have in mind. So the current. V1. So it's basically V by R1. Okay, so this, okay, let's say current I is entering here. Uh, okay, I2 is V by you can tell me the current I1 in terms of I, in terms of the current entering I. So this is the basic for uh, like uh, two case. Let's do the other way around. Let's take a three case of this. I know, no, not in terms of I, in terms of I, not in terms of the voltage. Okay, so in two case it is the current which is flowing to this, with I into this by the total uh, of this. So in this case, just consider like if you want to find I1, just group this into one and then do the same analysis. If you want to find R2, R1, R3 group and then do the same formula. So we get the one. Have till now? Anything? Okay, let's Next comes uh, active elements in patch. Like what are active elements? In electronics, you group your components into two parts active elements and passive elements. A passive component. So basically, what active, compon uh, active components are. They have their own energy sources. Like you need a, if the component has to work, you need an energy source like plugged in. It has its own energy source. Like a, let's say an op amp. Op amp is in. We'll learn what an op amp is in the future. So it requires a so power supply for internal operation as well. So this is called an active component which requires an energy source or it has its own energy source. It's an active component. Passive components. Are your uh, inductors, resistance, caps? So these are your passive components. They acquire energy from other energy sources. Like the current cap to a voltage source, it acquires energy from it. Here it requires its own energy source as well, or it has its own energy source. So this is a difference between an active component and a passive component. Let's move on to something called as unilateral element. So, what is unilateral element? Let's say you have a black box, and whatever you give inside can only go out from the other side. It can't come back like this. That's an unilateral element. For example, any example for unilateral element? Our 
resistors can flow current from both directions as well, right? Can current like this reverse voltage affect other resistors? Ah, so diode is an example for unilateral element. Only one way the current can flow, other way it's not possible for the current to flow. So a bilateral element is, you know, obviously the other way around of it. But the current can flow from both directions. You can like this as well. The current. So, yeah. Okay, let me ask you a simple question. The resistance always positive. Why will it be negative? Is there possibility of negative resistance anytime, anywhere? How? If you were how? Can you tell me? Like over the desk? No, no, not the material part of it. Just uh, let's say, okay, let's say I said uh, if I give voltage like this. If I give voltage like this, the current has to flow like this. Instead of flowing from positive to negative. Okay, the current flows from higher potential to lower potential, right? So the current, if it flows from the other way around, then it's a negative resistance. Like it flows from lower potential to higher potential. Is it possible for anything to stop? Is it possible to realize a negative? Okay, yeah, but normal resistance is not possible, but you can realize a virtual negative resistance using an op amp, which will be taught later in the A B. So in which uh, the voltage is like it's not actually a negative resistance, but it will imply a negative resistance when you look at it. We'll tell you what it is in the next uh, op amp. Like when we teach you op amps. Yeah. So moving on, like let's take up a quick problem, like the solvent solid metallic. Find the value of uh, R1 and R2. Uh, the current entering here is 5 amps. The total current entering the circuit. The current at this part is 1 amp. Like what is going to this much? I can tell you what I mentioned. Notice like what is going to 1 amp. So yeah, like when you look at problems like this, when compared to problems like those where circuits are very simple, you can't just solve them by uh, applying uh, your basic transformation. So we look at something what is called as KCLs and KVLs. KCL, Kick Off Current Law, and KVL. Like what Kick Off Current Law says is, is like from at a given node, the amount of the sum of all the currents entering and leaving the node should be equal to zero. That is your KCL. KVL says you can take a mesh or something like if you move from one point back to the same point, the total sum of voltages move across is the same, like will be zero. You can start from this point and uh, traverse this path, you come back to the same path, the voltage at this point is zero. It's like your work done in your physics where you, say, you come back to the same path and circle, displacement is zero and work done is zero. So at a point, and anyway, it doesn't make a sense to have a voltage at a point. So it doesn't matter. So KVL is, that's what KVL says and KVL says. We look into how to apply for this and solve it. Like I'll put, come back to the same problem next. Now look at all the elements that I analyzed and what analysis. Let's look at a very important part of this, which is the power supply. 
power supply may be a voltage source or a current source. This is a voltage source and like if you this is a current source. Like what's the difference between a voltage source and a current source? Can you know like anyone uh, knows the current source the voltage source? So yeah, basically a uh, voltage source always delivers a constant voltage across this irrespective of the current it can like it can deliver any it will make up for any amount of current it has to deliver such that the voltage across this always remains the same. Like whatever it may be like whatever it has to be correct, it will deliver the required amount of current but it makes sure the voltage is always same. Like let's say if I make it 6 volt and if I connect R1, this current, it can deliver any amount of current. Like if you keep on changing R, the I keep on changing but the voltage across this will always be 6 volt. So if I have to plot the current of this voltage plot for a voltage source, how will it look like? Voltage is constant and it can deliver any amount of current, like however large maybe it may be, like until there are certain limits for sources, but until then, like whatever R we change, the I keeps on increasing or decreasing depending upon the R, but it will always make sure that 6 volt is delivered across the system. So the graph will look like this, a constant voltage, any amount of current can be delivered. This is an ideal voltage source. But in practical labs, what you use is not an ideal source. It has a, a, a resistance called source resistance. We'll talk about it later. So this is a graph for uh, an ideal uh, voltage source. So the same thing happens to the current source, where in current source, like in any analysis which you use, one thing I would like to tell about voltage source is you don't know the amount of current entering unless you know the load on it. Like many analysis which you do, mesh analysis and node analysis, when you have a voltage, you don't know the current that's coming across it until like you uh, know the load across it. I'll give you an example like when this happens. So this is the current source. Current source, what it does is like whatever whatever load you collect here. If I'm on from now on, what I meant by load is any other circuit which which is apart from the power supply. Like anything that is connected to the power supply. You have a black box and it's a load. Like it's connected to the power supply and it takes in some current or some voltage. That is the load that's all. So water may be the RL, it always delivers constant current. Or let's say 6 amp, I is equal to 6 amp. Whatever may be the RL, it always delivers 6 amps, like irrespective of the voltage generated across it. So for a current source, the amount of voltage generated across a current source is not known. Like it, you can't say how much it is unless you do the rest part of the analysis and come back to it. So can you tell me how the graph works? So it will be a horizontal current rate. So irrespective of the voltage, the current always remains constant. This is an ideal current source. So what happens in practical cases is in a current source or an ideal for voltage source. So what, how do you model the practical sources? Like let's say you have a volt and you add a little bit of volt source to a small RS voltage. And this is a load. And now, this part of your this is your power supply. Together is your volt, voltage source. What you can go get in labs and all. You can see if you have like if you, you go to the lab in next year or something, you'll get in. There'll be a like those impedance button in your uh, power supplies. You can change the RS value, but it, it's very difficult to make it zero. It's never zero. So the voltage, like this will be a voltage source and this, what voltage it gets across this, you can tell me the voltage value it gets across this, actual voltage. You have a voltage source with a source resistance RS and you connect a load RL to it. What is the actual voltage VL which you get across RS? Okay, let's say the amount of current, since you don't know that RS exists, like the value of RS, it's model in terms of IL, VL and IL and RS, you don't know the value of V. So VL is equal to V minus AL and D. So as you can see now there is a deviation from the actual uh, what we plotted here. Like you don't get uh, the actual voltage, like as soon as the current starts increasing the voltage drop across this increases and the voltage drop across this decreases. So if you were to plot it would look something like that. So the 
is your parent cells to Jesus mice sorry and you have a resistance in series but in turn in front of from practical if you want to go to ideal you make rs is equal to 0 So now uh, look at the practical parent source. Here you use this I for both the I and so one can think what's the value of B L in terms of uh, i and i s and r s i l s total current entering this node is i some of them go some of which will go here so that will be i minus how much if, if the voltage drop across this is v l same will be across this as well so v l i This is your practical current source, that is your practical voltage. Any doubts? Anything? So, these are the basics of. Uh, Power, like what are the what are the components we are going to use in the analog electronics like very big like power supply and stuff capacitors and all we will talk about it later oh. I would like to look at how to solve the circuits like the mesh analysis and all this oh. So we look at something called a source transformation. Is it possible to convert a practical current source into such that like you can solve the circuit easily? So what we do is you have to have voltage with this and the R. So this is your source resistance. And you connect something here. It is similar to connecting a current source. resistance R and this value I is V by or V is equal to yeah. which source transformation is to do. Like so suppose you have a voltage source with resistance R, this is equivalent to a current source I into resistance R where I value is equal to V by R or if you have this this kind of circuit I and R, we want to convert it back to a voltage source, you will make use of a voltage is equal to I into R and a resistance R. It's very simple, right? Like the current which flows through this, which out goes outside is I. So that will be V by R, and the resistance just comes back in parallel, so that you can model it back there. Any doubt you have in this? This is basic application of Ohm's law. So, so let's uh, solve a problem based on this. You can see the red to the back. So finally this is a load resistance and I want current across this. This is a circuit. Let me the current on this. Make use of the simple source transformation to get this.
give you a hint with the first step, you can continue in a similar way. Like let's say, okay, let's 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 just forget this part of the circuit. Let's look at only this. Does this look similar to this? Does the six volt and three amp look similar to V and R here? I'll convert this into a current source. With the current value equal to six by three as two amps. And then I'll put this resistance three ohm in parallel to this. So this part of the voltage, which is six volt three amps here, V R is converted into I R two two amps three two two amps three ohms. Now connect the rest part of the circuit. Anyone who didn't understand this part of it? Anyone who didn't understand? I'm just see this mod. Forget this part. If you look at six volt three amps. Looks like V R. So I just converted a voltage source into a current source. The current value equal to two amp, and R will remain three in parallel. Can you continue further ahead like this and solve the problem? So yeah, so next transformation before this, like you can see three and six are in parallel. So what's the parallel for three and six together? Two, yeah. So number two. So now I convert uh, this back two ohm two ohm similar to this. I'll convert it back into this. Why I did this, is, if you can see, is because this is already a resistance in parallel. If I do a current source transformation, I get another resistance in parallel. This helps me solve this part of the circuit. Why I'm doing it back now into voltage sources? I have a resistance in series. If I do it again into this, I can solve this two ohm and whatever R I get. So that is why I'm doing it. So convert it back. I'll get uh, two into two is to be four volts. Then this is just comes to the series. So I saw this become four ohms. Let's see if there is four ohms. Now I can convert this back into a current source. With four ohm four volt into a parallel current source. Like if there are, let's say there are two current sources in parallel, like a three amp and a two amp connected like this. What if we have dead current flowing through outside? Five amps. So yeah, as I'm converting this back into a current source. So like just think of it like what part of circuit is there next and see which transformation reduces it. So I'll convert it. So we get a one amp and then a parallel. This is your final circuit. So now I'll, I'll just combine these two parallel current sources with add up to three plus one. Four amps, four here. Four amps. Then you have four ohms in parallel again, and a one ohm here. So now you can solve for I. Amps, right? 
3 plus 1 is 4, so 4 and 4 in parallel, so it gets split equally, so it will 2 amp. 3 1 4, both resistance same, the current split equally and it's 2 amp. So, you just reduce a complex network into a simple network using a, this thing. You can model, and let's say you have a, you have a complex state circuit like this, which you don't know, you can just model as simple as this. 4 amp current source into 4 ohm. So, this is how we do use source transformation. Any doubt in this? Any doubt? Till now, what are the Okay. So, let's move on to mesh analysis and node analysis. So, what mesh um, analysis exactly is, how a, what, what a mesh is, what, a, what exactly a mesh is. Single loop as such is a mesh, like this is a mesh. A, B, so A, B, F, E is a mesh, and so B, C, B, A, B, C, G, F is a mesh. So any closed loop is a mesh in a circuit you are given. So in any mesh analysis, just assume for each closed loop a current source. Here, I will close, I will close an IC flow, and then you add up, you apply KVL. What is KVL? The sum of voltages in this mesh is zero. Start from this point, let's say, you have voltage R1, R2. Okay. Start from this point. You apply, like, you have how many unknowns, how many equations you need to see, and that's any mesh equations you need to apply. So, let's say you, that's because you can't solve the equations unless you have equal number of uh, equations, as no, as many as unknowns. So, for this typical mesh, you start applying your KVL. Start from this point, so, here the current is flowing like this. So voltage drops like this. If you move along this, you can when you do a mesh analysis, you can move in either direction. Here the current is flowing like this, you can either move in the current direction or in the opposite direction as well. You end up getting the same equation. But you can't do like you can't move one direction and just one direction, one direction. It will end up uh, confusing your sign. So you better move in the direction of the current, it will be easier for you also. So here there is a voltage drop. So I write it as if there is a voltage drop from positive to negative, that means it's a minus. I write it as minus I1 R1. Here it is. And there is another drop here. Here, if you can see for this resistance, there are two currents flowing. One is flowing with this, one is flowing with this. So one is flowing with this is I2, one is flowing with I1. And I assume that my sign in this loop, I am moving this direction, so I assume to be plus minus. So if I move it down like this, with respect to I1, it's dropping. So I write it as I1 R2. But with respect to I2, it's moving from negative to positive, right? So I put it as plus. Plus I2 R2. And then, if you come here, the voltage source is from minus to plus, so it's plus V. Any doubt as in how to the equation change? I'll explain once again if you want. Like, in the direction of the current, I'm traversing the my mesh. This is my mesh right now, A, B, F, E. Traversing the direction of the current, the current is flowing through this uh, resistance in this way, so I mark plus minus. And for this resistance, you don't know like if I1 and I2, which is greater, to stay the direction of the voltage. So just assume it to be plus minus like this. If there is any change as such, you'll end up getting I2 minus I1, and the negative will be it will be compensated in the sign. You don't need to worry about that. Just assume a direction if there is a confusion like this. I'm assuming plus minus like this, and then I move with respect to I1. I'm moving from positive to negative, so I wrote minus I1 R2. With respect to I2, I am moving from negative to positive, since my current is flowing like this, I put plus I2 into R2 plus 
and then here voltage is positive like it's going from negative to positive in this direction so i put plus b equal to 0 similarly write these equations for all three meshes like how, how many mesh you need like if there are three meshes and like if all of them are unknown you can't solve this circuit because if uh, 1 2 3 or 4 5 uh, r r phi and 3 there are eight unknowns and there are only three meshes you can't solve this equation at least minimum uh, if there are three unknowns and three since there are three mesh here you can solve the equation so yeah this is how the mesh analysis is like basically you apply kvl for each mesh and then solve it let's take up an example thing any doubt as to how to apply a mesh Yeah, yeah, you can take, you can combine two meshes together and still apply the equation. I, okay. Any of this is a mesh, any mesh you can apply, like let's say, let's say your unknowns are here and here. Why do you want to apply for this? Because you know everything in this. Like if I know everything in this, two, three, four, and the current also flowing through this, you don't need this mesh for analysis, right? Because you know everything in this. Just use this, like you go through this path and travel it like this. Like any node, if you come back, you just have to come back to the same point as well. You can go through any mesh possible. I mean, you can't go like, and I think you can come back, come, come like this as well. So prefer a closed path. Because in closed close path only you can apply KVL, you can't apply for anything else, any open path. KVL is also only for closed path. So let's take up a very simple problem. Let's go, let's take now. I1, I2, I3. Here there are three unknowns, you just need uh, three equations to solve this. So you can apply for this mesh, this mesh, and this mesh, and then solve it. Just look at where the unknowns are present and try applying, make a combination of those to solve the equation. Let's start writing down the equation. So this is the voltage source. I put plus minus. This is the five ohm resistance. I put current is flowing like this to so plus minus. So you don't know the direction of the current. I just assume it to be plus minus like this. Here I apply plus minus. So you mesh mesh one. apply for the first mesh that is minus i1 into phi ohms minus i1 into 15 ohms plus i2 into 15 ohms this is going from minus to plus so it will be plus forwards is equal to 0 this is my first equation this is all KVL equation so and in the next part Let's move on to the second mesh. Minus I2 into N O. And again here and as here well as here, there are two currents flowing. One is I2 like this, I3 like this. There are also I2 like this and I1 like this. With respect to this sign convention only you apply whatever it is because we assume it as such. Assume with respect to I2 here and with I1 here. So in this case it will be minus I2 into 8 ohm plus I3 into 8 ohms. This part is for this. Minus I2 into 8 ohms plus I3 into 8 ohms. And coming to this, it will be uh, minus okay, I plus I2 into 15 ohms. Because in this part, I just plus minus and you are going like this, traversing the mesh like this. And minus of I1 15 ohms equal to 0. Mesh. Any doubt? So, yeah, this is 
your second equation. So third equation is very simple. So it will be minus i3 square law. Move from positive to negative here. So it's a negative equal to this will be minus plus i3 and 2 a2 minus Any doubt any question or any mistake? So if we solve these three equations, we get up uh, end up getting. We just solve for i2 from this uh, in terms of i3 and apply it here. We get two equations in i1 and i2, solve them and then finally solve for. Okay, this is simple mesh analysis. Let's say I give one more circuit. We are applying KVL everywhere, but here there is a current source. We can't don't know the voltage across current source. Yes. What will you do? So people are studying electrical electrical in chem cycles. You know, we combine two mesh together to form a super mesh. Like I combine this mesh, which is this part and this to form a super mesh. This is what is called a super mesh analysis where you combine two or more meshes. So what you do is you combine this mesh and this mesh together to form a super mesh and here you know the current of uh, I am flowing in this direction right but the current of I1 is flowing in this I2 is flowing in this so I can simply write this equation as I2 minus I1 is equal to pi amps correct right because pi amps current is flowing through the source and nothing can oppose the source like nothing like whatever current enters or something and compensation should be pi amps should always flow out of the source. Like net pi amps should always fly, uh, like flow out the source. So I2 is flowing in this direction, I1 is flowing with this. So I write my first equation as I2 minus I1 is equal to pi amps. This is my first equation. Now instead of applying for individual mesh, I can't apply for individual meshes because I don't know the voltage across my current source. I told you that whatever voltage it requires to compensate for pi amps pi amp current it provides. I don't know that voltage unless you solve for the other components and then find the voltage. So I apply a super mesh analysis. Here I know the current of I1 is provided. So this entire node and here I will apply my super mesh analysis. So my equation will be mass plus minus. So I will so write my equation, it will be minus 2 amp into I1 minus 4 amp into I2 plus 2 minus again and then coming back like this will be plus minus of so i1 plus 1 
I applied a super mesh, combined these two mesh to form a super mesh, and then applied my case here to the entire outer loop. This is my first equation. This is my second equation. First. Oh yeah, I forgot that. So yeah, this is plus minus the first equation. Plus two into I three. Plus four ohm into is correct now correct thank you so yeah this is my first second equation that is my first equation and then you can apply it for this mesh as well that is the normal equation These are three equations, there are three unknowns and I can solve it. So this is the basic concept of information analysis. If you have a current source whose voltage is not known and you want to apply, you, know, you can't apply the mesh analysis for individual paths because you don't know the voltage across it. You combine these two meshes together and then you apply the case for the entire mesh and you know the pi amp is I to minus I to minus. Okay. Any doubt? Okay, so this is the end of mesh analysis, don't analyze this quickly. Okay, what is not analysis says at from a single point whatever current enters into the node or leaves the node, the sum of total current is always zero from a node, in a node, like if I have a, You can associate a voltage with When you have a circuit like this, you can always assume this your negative terminal here to be a ground, which is grounded. That's for a And you can assume that each of these nodes has a voltage, the V1. And each the current entering this node, like and leaving this node, like let's say in general load analysis, what you assume is the current leaving the node is positive, current entering the node is negative. Current leaving the node is positive. Even the node is positive. The way around is vice versa. So, a node is a point where two or more junctions meet. So, at this point, if you want to apply, now you apply something called as a KVL where the amount of current uh, entering the is zero. So, my case here is my bad word the current law where the sum of total law, sum of current entering or leaving the node is zero. So, if I want to apply at this point, what is the current like which goes from here to here? V1 minus V by R3. Like let's say let's say all of them are going out just for convention. Like if if suppose the convention you assumed is wrong, you end up getting all which is negative and it compress it automatically. So you don't need to worry about that. Just assume a single convention and start solving. And if your assumed convention is wrong, you get an answer. If you expected a positive answer, you get a negative answer. Plus V1 by R1 plus V1 minus V2 by R2. Similar to this as well, so it will be V2 minus 0 by R4 plus V2 by R5 plus V2 V1 by R2. Basic uh, node analysis where you apply your KCL solve for it.
He just looked, just looked at a simple problem and uh, wind it up. Any doubt in one analysis? We can't find the correct answer. They call this problem 15 and tell me the answer. Tell me the node voltage. Yeah. This is a node. Is this a node? Is this a node? This? So we two or more. Actually more than two. Tell me the power dissipated by the one amp source. What's power? If you have is delivering a current I, say G, what's the power? I V. So yeah, tell me the power uh, associated with one amp source. Start writing the equation for it. Three is equal to yeah. So for V one and V two, V one. At point V one, as you can see, the current uh, one amp is entering inside it. So I'll just write minus one amp since one amp current is entering into this node. I'll write minus one amp plus V one minus V two by five amp. So five ohms. My God. Plus V one. Minus V3, V3 is 5 volt as we know, so I'll just write it as 5. V1 minus 5 by 5. This is the equation correct. 1 amp is entering this node, so I write it as minus. Any current entering the node is negative, any current leaving the node is positive, sign convention. And then you write V1 minus V2 by 5 ohms plus V1 minus V3 5 volts by 5 ohms is equal to 0. Similarly, apply for V2 as well. V2 minus 0 by 2 ohms plus V2 minus V1 by 5 ohms plus V2 minus 5 by 4 ohms. Power, power. So any doubt in mesh node analysis? Anything? Till now, the quarter was got. Yeah. So that's it for mesh analysis node analysis. So I should continue with that. So we don't have much time up. We only have 15 minutes. So I will introduce the beginning of Thevenin's theorem. Okay, so before that, I'd like to uh, just cover something that's very basic, but we often miss out. So, uh, what happens when v is equal to zero? This is a voltage source. What do you get when v is equal to zero? So 
when when people say I'm zeroing out a source, what happens is a voltage source becomes short circuit, a current source becomes an open. Fine. So I think uh, it is covered uh, source transformation a bit. But I In real life, there are, uh, they, you don't get an ideal source. You never get just a V. A practical source is always a V with a small resistance. And so you can always convert this kind of source. This is a practical uh, voltage source. You can convert it into a practical current source. That is, I. Where? This I sorry. So this I is V by R. This is just to set the stage for uh, seven and zero. So, okay. So I'll give you a simple circuit, and you guys have done uh, mesh analysis already. So you guys can quickly solve this if you can. So I will give you the answer. So four so here. So we'll analyze the circuit. There's a current I1 flowing through this mesh. There's a current I2, I2 flowing through this mesh. Right. And so we apply the sign convention. Plus minus. Uh, plus minus. So this would be the equation you get would be 9 is equal to 4 into I1 I1 plus 4 into this I1 minus I2 plus 6 into I1 Is it visible? Is everyone? Can you see this? Okay. And now we have to do the same thing for this loop also. So here you would get 4 into, start from here, 4 into I2 minus I1, okay, plus 5 into I2 plus 2 into I2. So, you can pull out a calculator and you can, you know, reduce this further down when you, uh, and solve it. So, the final equation you get would be here, I1 minus 4, I2 equal to 9, and this would be minus 4, I1 plus 11 I2 is equal to 0. So you can use the calculator to solve these two mean equations and you would get um, some I1 is equal to 717.39 milliampere I2 is equal to 260 milliampere. So we just keep this value in mind right now, okay, to see what we're gonna do. Uh, have you, how many of you have done Thevenin's theorem before? Okay. Most of you have done. It. Okay, fine. So basically, we care only about this load resistance, okay, and we want to observe what happens when we keep varying this load resistance. So imagine, so you already analyzed the circuit, but imagine I ask you to instead of two, I gave you ten, and then I ask you to find the current through the circuit. Or oh, I substituted any value over here. So then you have to do the whole process again. You have to get the equation. You have to simplify it. You get two equations and you have to solve them. So it becomes repetitive. If you have to analyze it for several resistances, it's a lot of work. So instead of that, we just consider 
if you want to find a simplified version of this network okay because this network doesn't matter we only care about what's happening with this resistor okay so that's what Thevenin's theorem says. Thevenin's theorem says that if you have any network, it could be anything over here, over here. So it could be any kind of network inside. Okay, and if you have a resistor here, you could represent any network inside as complex as it gets, with uh, assuming it's only independent sources and passive elements. You can represent it by Represented by a independent voltage source in series with a resistor. Is that clear? So no matter as how complex as it gets, you can always represent that by just, and then we can analyze any R. You can just connect whatever R you want to just find the current source. But now the question is, how do you find VTS and R of seven volts and seven? Okay, so we start off by trying to find the seven in voltage for this circuit. Okay, so trying to find the seven. Okay, so seven in voltage. So what you do for that is you have to find V seven is basically the voltage across these two ends. If you call this A and B. It's the voltage across these two ends when you remove this. So the voltage across these two. So when you so I'll draw the circuit again over here. You have nine volts. You have four ohms. You have six ohms. You have four ohms and you have five. Ohms. So this is just a hanging resistor over here. It really doesn't matter very much. So we can ignore that. Okay, so all you need is to find out the voltage across this. Now does anyone know how to find the voltage across this resistor? Well, what rule do you use? What do you use? It's just voltage divider. Right. So you can just use voltage divider rule for this. So what is this V7? V7 is equal to the source voltage. That's uh, 9 into 4 by 4 plus 4 plus 6, plus 14, and you get 2.571 ohms. Okay, that clear? All right. And uh, now you have to find R T N. R seven. So how you find R seven in is you zero out all the independent sources. So if you zero out this source, what do you get? Got this, yeah. So here you basically get four, six, four. So you have to look the resistance as seen from these two points. So as you can see this is 4 plus 6 10. It's uh, so this is 10 ohms in parallel with 4 ohms. So you know you can do that yourself. So I'll just give you the final value for that. What you get is 7.857 ohms. Okay. So we had this big circuit over that. Okay with a lot of two loops and this could be as many loops you know could be many more loops you never know but we have simplified it we can simplify it using just these two values VTS and RTS okay so okay, so we have both the values we need here So, seven theorem says that this entire circuitry over here can be represented just by the 
now Matthew put a 2 ohm resistor over here. Can you calculate the value of current? This is you put a 2 ohm resistor. What is I? Value is this. What I wanted to say, conclude, was that you know it, you know you, it doesn't matter what you have here. You know you've represented all this by just. This. So you've simplified it. So now imagine you want to put a thousand ohms over here. Okay. Imagine you want to put a thousand ohms. Imagine you want to put anything over here. You want to add another big circuit over here. So you don't have to. So now you can just use this to represent this part, and you've simplified it great. So I don't think we have enough time to go into Norton here today. Uh, so you know, I'll I'll go you know, recap on what happened. So basically, we had a two circuit. Okay, so we had uh, did the mesh analysis of this. So the sign convention does you remember you know, the current leaves the source and it enters resistance, positive here, negative, positive, negative, so on. We analyzed this. And we wrote the loop equation for each one. We got two loop equations, 9 plus 4i, and so on. And then we simplified the loop equations. We got two uh, linear equations and two variables. And uh, we solved them. And we got two values of current. And uh, then we said that we can simplify or we can represent this entire circuit inside, whatever it may be, no matter how complex it is, as long as it just consists of passive element and an independent source, we can represent that by just a voltage source and a resistor. So that's what we did. So how do we do that? First, what we do is, uh, we, we can start with VTS. So for VTS, you uh, remove the resistor. You make a short, an open circuit here. You remove the resistor, make it open, okay? And then find out the voltage that appears across these two points. So, you had like you had like a random box, and you did not know uh, what's inside. Okay. You first, you know, you remove any everything from there, and you find VTS. You measure VTS, okay, and uh, then you zero out all your sources. So that means this became a short circuit. If you had a if you had a current source here, by the way, what would happen? Yeah. So if you had a current source here, this would become an open circuit, then you wouldn't have to consider this. It would be gone. And so then you consider the rest of the resistances. So in that case, you had four. This is gone. This is a short circuit. Four in series with six. They parallel with four. And uh, this resistance, sorry, yeah, I, I think I missed out on something. That. This value, and then we can represent that simply with this. Way. And you know, you can now you can analyze for any case, you, know, you can put whatever resistance here, and it'll give you whatever current value you get over here after analyzing the simple circuit. Is the same current you would get if you analyze this circuit for that table value. So that's basically Devon's theorem. We will try completing Norton's and other theorems in uh, the coming days. Any questions?